talk is just something you want to talk about uh, that's important that you think uh, the libertarian advance uh, from the libertarian perspective could be changed or whatever. So, talk, Aaron, uh, sorry, Aaron Wright's going to come up and talk to us about local activism and why it matters. All right. <laughs> Assuming I had to solve that. I had to solve it. Okay. No, I got you, Aaron. You got it. Okay. I got you. So, to start off, anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Aaron. Uh, been around the chapter a while. Uh, you know, and kind of my thing is is doing stuff locally. Uh, I am elected to a local recreation board, so I'm sort of a big deal in the community, as you guys might know. Uh, and I would tell you, <laughs> my plan was to come here and just flat wing this thing, and because it's kind of my deal. I mean, it's. I, I kind of know about this issue, but then I decided I got a captive audience here for 15 minutes. I better give you something tangible <laughs> that you can take and, and not just keep you here just staring at me uh, battling. So if you ever watch any of my live streams, you'll know that staying on point is not one of the things that anybody would say that they liked about it. So I do have some notes that I'm going to go off of. All right, so just real quick, the board that I'm elected to, it's the Collinsville Area Recreation Board. If we go way back in time to 2007, uh, this board was completely out of control. They were racking up debt by the millions. They were engaging in all sorts of spending. They were, they were buying, buying assets that, that were extremely questionable for very questionable values. They were issuing long-term bonds that were actually supposed to be for one thing, but actually included millions of dollars in operating funds. So there was a whole bunch of, of uh, really just shady, uh, borderline criminal. I mean, if stupidity was criminal, it would definitely be criminal, okay? Now, why, why is this story significant? You know, th this, is, this has all changed nowadays, but why is this significant? Why? Nobody was going to these meetings. Nobody knew what this board was doing. And if, so if you had gone to the meetings, you would have seen some irregularities. You would have seen that that some things were not being done right. And as libertarians, you would have easily identified that, you know, th this board's not operating in a way that's going to advance freedom. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to start with about, you know, what went on with that board and just sort of extrapolate that to where you live, what's going on in your community. So as libertarians, what we want is we want a world set free in our lifetime. Right, as Nick Sarwark says, one of the favorite things that he says, uh, one, one of my favorite things that Sarwark says, is we want to see a world set free in our lifetime. Now, I'll ask you, what do you think affects your life more? Do you think it's, you know, something that President Trump said today, or do you actually think it's something that's going on at the village of Swansea, or in the city of Belleville, or in the city of Collinsville, right? The, the local issues affect your life to a much greater degree, I would argue. All right, so you have to know what these people are up to. And as libertarians, we can directly affect our community in a positive way. So instead of, you know, the, the Ron Paul quote of, let it not be said that we did nothing, right? Well, you, you can't check the box saying I did nothing because you want an argument on Facebook or, or your perception is that you won this argument, okay? So we have to be out in the community. We have to be out doing things. And wear a shirt. Hey, hey, I know he said that we did nothing. That's right. I don't know if that's a direct quote of Paul, Dr. Paul. It is. It is, okay. Good. All right, so we want to make our community better. How are we going to make our community better? You have to know the issues, okay? The issues at CARD were very specific to that district, okay? So if we go to Troy, Troy has a recreation district. Are we going to be able to do something in Troy the same as we were able to do in Collinsville? Probably not. They're going to have different issues. Now, I know for, for one thing, Troy, the Troy Recreation District likes to up their tax levy. And like two years ago, they upped it 20%, the maximum legal uh, available, because you know they were afraid one kid might not get to play baseball. Uh, so they're, they're upping their tax levy. So in that case, you know, 
if there were some local activists in Troy, maybe they could have intervened, or uh, you know, you can use that issue against somebody in the next election. Okay. So you have to know the issues and you have to know the people. What what issues are, are these boards bad on? And who on the board is bad on that issue? Right? So if, if you got a tax and spend board, who are the people on that board that are the biggest tax and spenders? And then those are the people that we want to target. And, and I'll talk about how we target them there in a minute. Uh, so in order to know these issues, obviously you have to, this is the part that sucks. You have to go to the meetings, okay? Or otherwise find out this information. Uh, I'm lucky in Collinsville, um, lucky and unlucky, because the city of Collinsville is horrific. But they, they live stream all their meetings. And if you miss the live stream, then you can pick it up the next day. You can, you can download the file and watch it at your leisure. So it's really nice. Uh, if your board doesn't do that, then you can video the meeting. It's, it's always legal to video or live stream a meeting. Uh, and, and we can talk about we can talk about the technology uh, behind that. But if you have people on tape, you can use their information, right? If you, you have them on video, you can you can chop a piece of video and say, look what this person said, right? And you can use that on social media. You can, you can try to use that to bring people to your uh, perspective, okay? Once you have that information, you know that you know, Councilman Snuffy is really bad on raising taxes, okay? Then you gotta know when Councilman Snuffy's up for re-election. You gotta know what candidates are gonna be available to go against Councilman Snuffy and if they, if they share your perspective, okay? And so for instance, we got Paul and Mark both running for trustee uh, in their respective uh, villages, right? So we know because they're one of us that they're gonna share a perspective, but up in Collinsville, we got a guy who's, he's a libertarian by, by all accounts, okay? He's running for city council. And of course I'm gonna support him because I know that I know that he shares my perspective. And I know that the two people who are up for re-election this year are terrible, right? So, so you have to know these things going in. Uh, and it, that's all gonna come from attending the meetings. And the big thing about attending the meetings Watching them online is cool, but a, a big benefit of being there in, in person is seeing the other people who attend the meetings, right? And there's going to be people there who share your perspective, and there's going to be people there who don't. And what you want to do is you want to network with the people who do. I mean, this is, this is all like no-brainer stuff, right? But make connections with those people. Find out their name. Find out if they come to these meetings all the time. Find out what their issues are. Find out what's important to them. And, you know, this can be done by... They get up and address the board during the public comment period, or uh, if you happen to see an issue, and then the next next time they meet, you address the board during the public comment. Somebody might come up and say something to you, right? And say, "Hey, I really appreciate what you had to say." Oh, okay, good. Maybe we're on the same page. What issues are important to you? What are you know? Why do you come to these meetings? What, what what's your deal, right? So you want to you want to network with those people, and also. If you, if you have the opportunity to really follow the issues and use the public comment period and, and try to try to move public opinion in, into your favor, right, on, on, let's say, like a tax issue. I mean, I think we can all kind of agree, like, tax is bad. We want lower, we want lower taxes, right? So if this, this board's really bad on taxes and, and you're making a big deal out of that, and there's a couple of people there that, are, that, that you're kind of going after on this tax issue, you want to establish yourself as sort of an expert on the issue, right? You want people to know that you're someone they can count on to be against these things, and you're someone they can count on to make commentary and spread information and all that type of stuff. And I'll give specific examples uh, toward the end. Um, you definitely want to use social media to your advantage while you're trying to you know, do this kind of thing. If you have... Uh, there, there might be groups to do with your city. Be in those groups and post your information there. If there's not a group, start a group. Have a Facebook page or a Twitter or something like that that you're putting out this information. Put it on YouTube, put it on wherever you can. I don't know if Instagram is a thing uh, for political activism. It is. Put it on Instagram, all right? I don't Instagram. Um, when you're networking, find out about other groups, right? So if you find a, if you find a real good issue, like for instance, uh, going back to Troy, raising their tax levy, okay? 
Americans for Prosperity was on that. I actually found out about it from them when I went up to the meeting. Um, AFP has resources, and they're generally on the same page with us. And so if you have an issue, like the card, dissolution, they helped with that. They held phone banks. They helped petition. They helped fund some of that, okay? So, so we reached out to them. We brought them in as like, a, as like sort of a partner. We use their technology to help spread the message, okay? Libertarians win. We work this literally using Coke money. Everybody's afraid of the Coke money, right? Literally, <coughs> literally using the Coke money to help us get more freedom, okay? So, so get help from other groups. Another thing is, and I hate to say, I know this is kind of a dirty word, probably not for everybody in the room, but the GOP. When you get down to the local level, your local Republicans are going to be generally better on our issues than local Democrats. Generally. And I say that with, with quite a bit of caveat because uh, they, they really vary, you know what I mean? So there, there's some good ones and there's some bad ones and there's most everybody else kind of needs with um, also, one tip, and I, I know the GOP people are doing this, when they're precinct committee persons, and they're working an issue, they'll have a business card. If we're going door to door and we're collecting petition signatures for a ballot initiative, right, they'll give people a business card, and they'll say, hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so, I'm a trustee over here, I'm a township trustee, oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm in favor of this issue that doesn't have to do with the township. Call me any issues you have, okay? So you met them, they know, you know if they're on your side. They know you were working on an issue that's gonna lower their taxes. They know that you're elected to a particular body or maybe you're running for a particular body, okay? And now they have your contact information. So now you're helping to elevate your status in their mind. So maybe they'll, if they see your name on a ballot, they're likely to vote for you. Or if they have an issue, they'll call you and you can talk to them about it. You can spread libertarian ideas that way. This is a real thing, I promise you. Um, okay, with that said, oh, the last thing I would say about uh, local issues, if none of that stuff, if, if none of this like city, park district, school board stuff, if none of that means anything to you, start an issue group if there's an issue that you have that is, uh, you know, like, like, your, uh, like your issue, right? So like, let's say like right to try. Uh, if Illinois is a right to try state. In fact, I think the right to try might have passed nationally. We're not really sure. But if, if your thing is right to try, you think people should be able to try medication, right? If, if they're terminally ill, you, you believe in this. Start a group for right to try. And, you know, try to attract people to, you know, network. It's kind of probably going to be a little more of a statewide thing. But, you know, you, you can do these types of things. And there's back to the other groups to help you. There's places like the 10th Amendment Center. I use Right to Try because that's one of their issues. So you can go to the 10th Amendment Center and you can get model legislation. You can get support from them on how to how to run this group and how to you know how to uh, advance your issue. All right. Uh, so I'm going to close with 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 one example, okay, of how you can make your community better. Obviously, we have the card dissolution thing. So we actually dissolved a park district in Collinsville. The park district is going away. So everybody that lives in that park district is going to see an immediate reduction in their taxes. That is a way that tangibly makes their life better, like today, okay? Now, I had a small part in it. Chris had a small part in it. <clears throat> if we're being honest, the GOP ran it, okay? But when it's an issue like that, we should be on the field. We should not be on the sidelines going, oh, look what the GOP is doing, okay? And they know we helped. They know libertarians helped. And that's one of the ways that this guy that I'm telling you is libertarian, that's one of the ways that he got some support from them to run for city council. Okay? The other thing is, there's a thing in Illinois called home rule. And I don't want to give too much away about this, but you can petition to have home rule move, removed from a community. The home rule is a constitutional form. Of, it's in the Illinois Constitution. The thing about home rule, if a, if a city is more than 25,000 people, they automatically get home rule status unless they like unless people vote to not take it or something. And if you're a home rule community, you can levy all sorts of taxes and you have no tax limitations. There's all types of borrowing that you can do. And you can just basically kind of do whatever you want. You can do these stupid things like Troy is doing and try to build a giant indoor sports dome. You can do this 
crap like Belleville wants to do and try to build like a massive convention center to, rec to directly compete with the one that's right down the road. Okay. If you don't have home rule, you can't do any of those things because you can't raise the revenue. And so there's going to be a local issue coming up in a undisclosed city to repeal home rule to handcuff the city council that's run amok, right? Now, if we're successful, again, that's another issue that's going to directly make people's lives tangibly better. So those are two examples that I wanted to give, uh, and that basically completes it. Please what everything I have to say about local activism. Any questions? I do have a question. Because I have a tenant. No, we already clapped. <laughs> I feel like I had four seconds left. And I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, good. So I have a tenant with problem with this. And I with the exception of one guy who's always just like louder in the face of the mayor. Um the entire room is like fanboys almost. Yeah. Of city government. Yeah, so. Um, like, like, it's kind of like disturbing to watch. $5, I got $5 that says that nobody in that room is not a city employee, except for you. And so, what you need to do, or I, I'm not going to say what you need to do, but how you rectify that situation is that you try to, try to identify an issue. If they have an issue that you think will be popular, which it's hard, granted, it's hard to tell what's going to be popular, okay? I don't want to give the impression that that uh, this is some silver bullet, you can just go tape them, put it out on social media, and everybody's going to like, everybody's going to put their yellow vests on and march to the streets. I don't want to give that impression. But if you can catch them doing something really stupid or saying something really inflammatory, and I don't mean a gotcha thing, I mean, you know, something that's bad. Like those little roundabouts? Put that out. I like roundabouts. But, Okay. That roundabout, they, they're roundabouts in Ohio and suck, though. They don't build them right. Um, so, so uh, you gotta, you got to somehow build some support for your issue. If, if the meeting is that way, you got to bring people in. you got to attract people to the meeting and then have a string of people speaking for the issue. Okay? As you do this, perhaps it will build steam as, more, as it becomes more popular. Right? So basically send that. Like no, so that. so if it's if if I'm right and it's 100% employees that are better at the meeting, then there's no opposition. So the public the doesn't the perfect. public doesn't know what's yeah. going on. The public does not know what's going on. That's what I'm here to tell you. Look, we had our the people are complaining about the car budget right now. We just had our budget hearing a couple months ago. There was not one person there. Okay, I've always, not even our employees. I've been under the impression that I'm not lunch. I'm under the impression that the crowns of the when it comes to Metro East Green News because it is like, it's for a lot of money, it's, yeah. it's awesome. And people are generally like, they have the money, they're not feeling pain so much. Of yes. Relatively high taxes. Most everyone works together anyway, or indirectly, indirectly or indirectly because it's a military town. Right. So either the worker for the military, they're, um, they're they're generally in favor of the spending right. that's going so on. I, they I, love their ball fields. Well, you know, they, they're either for the military, working for the military, they're in the military, or they're working as a contractor base. for the military, yeah. or yeah. their commuter yeah. to St. Louis, in which case well, they're, well, they, they're less concerned about parochial stuff. Well, if they're a commuter to St. Louis, they know that they're getting hosed because everybody that they know that lives in Missouri pays a fraction of the property taxes they pay. But the alternative problem is West County. West County is like ridiculously expensive, so they are getting a deal with them. Okay, right. They get the same thing they do in West County, but it's so that's so that's a real problem. Okay, that's a that's a real problem that you that you may not be able to build support there. Um, it, you know, depending on the issue. That's why I'm not even considering. Them. Okay, all right. I'm focusing on some more stuff. Yeah, I'm with you there. All right. I'm sorry, anybody else? Any other issues? All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you, Ray. Right. You guys have all right.